Hey everyone, welcome back to Drill Man's Land. I hope you're having an amazing day. Man, it has been a while since I made my last video and there's actually a really good reason for that. I've been stuck in a creative rut. I haven't really had anything that's gotten me excited to go out to shoot in a while. And as a result of that, I haven't been publishing as many videos. That's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. One, how do you plan a shoot that gets you out of a creative rut? And then two, I'll be talking about the different gear and settings that I will be using and planning for for that shoot. Getting out of that creative rut, what do you need to do? Well, for me, it's all about taking it back to doing something that's fun that I enjoy doing. So when I thought about this, it was actually golf. I've always been a passionate golfer, I'm not very good, but you know, I grew up playing with my dad, my friends, and it's a sport that I really enjoy playing. So, okay, there we go. We've got the thing we love doing, golf. So what am I gonna do to actually do photo and video of that to help me bring the passion I have for that game back to my photography and videography? So let's do a partnership with a golf course. Well, to make that possible, I reached out to a bunch of different courses all across Calgary and in the mountains. Actually, my top choice did get end up getting back to me, which was really cool. That being the Silver Tip Resort out in Canmore. If you're not from Calgary, Canmore is a beautiful mountain town, just about an hour outside the city. I've done a lot of different reviews there. I go there just on weekend trips with my fiance. It's just an all around great little town. So what kind of shots do I wanna get on this shoot? I wanna do something a little bit different Different. The first thing I'll need is probably an action camera. So I actually reached out to the camera store here in Calgary and they set me up with some goodies. The first one being the GoPro Hero 11. This is a great camera. Um, it shoots 5.7K, 4x3. Um, we'll go into the settings I'm planning on using a little bit later. Where are we gonna mount this camera to get the shots we want? So I did get out to the driving range today and I had, and I had a chance to try out some different mounts. I tried the, the bike mount, which was great. It fit perfectly on the golf club and then also the head and chest mount as well. The thing I'm really excited about doing is trying to mount an action camera to the shaft of the golf club, but I'm not super comfortable using a loaned camera to me to do that. So we've actually got a GoPro Hero 7 that we will be mounting both on the golf club as well as on myself and on the ground. one of the most important things to do is make sure your camera's actually charged up. The uh, 11 just died. All right, so here is the mount we're gonna try putting on the golf club. Right now we've just got an eight iron. We're gonna try doing a couple different shots, one low down the shaft, pointing up, and another one high on the shaft, pointing down. Um, the mount that we're using is the GoPro bike mount. I'm hoping I can go lower on the shaft, but if I can't, then I'll just have to go higher up. Actually, that's looking like it's gonna be pretty darn good. Okay, so we'll just get this into position. We'll wanna make sure we snug this up nice and tight, of course. Man, already one of the fun challenges with mounting it like this is uh, it throws off the weight of the club completely. So this is this is kind of feeling weird. Let's uh, Let's see what we can do. The next thing I was thinking about was, man, I love my S5 II, but I don't really have an all around zoom lens that I can use. So in partnership with the camera store and Panasonic Canada, I uh, got the 24 to 105. It's a great lens, it's an F4 straight all the way through, and it's the kind of lens that once you put it on your camera, you're not going to have to really take off, which is great. I'll be doing a full review of this lens a little bit later on, but this is gonna be the piece of kit that I use for the majority of our shoot on Monday. The other piece is my drone. I have a DJI Mini 3 Pro. It's a great little drone, I love it a ton, but one of the things that you run into in a lot of places that you go to shoot is you're not allowed. It doesn't matter the size of your drone, it's just not permitted. I've actually got a video above my left hand here. If you're in Canada and you want to learn more about drone regulations, I go into it in more detail. The town of Canmore is a place where you aren't allowed to shoot with a drone. So I did engage the silver tip manager and I said, hey, I don't think I can fly here. Is there any way that we can maybe make this work? And he said, oh, I'm actually connected with the town council. I will reach out to them and get special permission. So we did. So, all right, there we go. First thing off the bat, drone is allowed. Next thing to think about is lighting as well as traffic on the golf course. It's a world-class resort, meaning there's gonna be lots of people getting ready to play at the first tee time, as well as the maintenance staff that have to go out to make it look pretty. With all those things in mind, luckily sunrise is actually super early. It's at 5.30 a.m. this coming Monday. And the maintenance work on the course doesn't start till six. So we're actually gonna start shooting at five in the morning morning. I know it's going to be super early. I'm going to have to pick up Marcus, my buddy who's coming out to shoot with me right around that 3.30 a.m. mark to get out there in time. Oh. 
But by doing this, we're really going to make sure that we have the course to ourselves and we're not going to have any other people in our shots, which is pretty great. Let's also quickly go through the settings I'll be filming with on Monday, both on my S5 II as well as on the GoPro. Okay, so let's get into the settings on the S5 II. In terms of the mode, I am going to keep this in the, the video mode for the majority of the shoot. I am going to be shooting the majority of it in freehand, so I do want to make sure that I've got my e-stabilization turned on. It is going to crop in a little bit, but that is something that is worth doing. So we're going to keep that on standard. We're not going to do boost IS unless we are actually doing a stationary shot. We're going to just keep it in standard for basically everything. In terms of our photo style, I love Panasonic colors, so we're going to keep this in standard. Our ISO will be set to manual. We've got our shutter and gain operation set to angle. We've got our dynamic range on high. We're going to obviously record on the full sensor and we're actually going to be alternating. So we'll shoot some of the video in 4K24 and then anything that I need to do in slow motion, we will switch to full HD 120. That way then I can slow it down. Okay, let's go through the settings on the GoPro Hero 11. So keep in mind, again, this is the camera we're going to be using for most of the headshots. So for these shots, we're actually going to be shooting in 2.7K um, so we can get the 240 frames per second. I mean, that's awesome. That's super slow-mo. We can definitely do a lot. We've got our hyper smooth turned on. We've got our lens mode just set to the standard wide, and that is about it there. In terms of our bit rate, we are going to raise that a little bit just to make sure we get as much write speed as possible. We'll keep the shutter on auto. The ISO min is 100, the ISO max, we are actually gonna lower that to right around that 800 mark because with these little cameras, you don't wanna push it too much. In terms of sharpness, we're actually gonna put this on low because these cameras sharpen just a little too much. And then for color, we're gonna shoot in flat so that way then we can get, we can color match it to everything else we do. All right, here we go. Let's get this little guy turned on. Again, this is the Hero 7 Black. We are going to shoot in 1080 and then we will get the frame rate up to 120. The ISO man is 100, the ISO max is 400. We've got the flat color profile. This is looking perfect. Okay, so we've got our DJI Mini 3 Pro. Let's go ahead and get this one dialed in. Great, so currently it's dialed in at 4K60. That is perfect. We are just gonna leave that as is. We've got our format set to mob, which is better for Mac. We've got our color profile with DCineLike, and we've got our coding at H265. So that way then we get that 10 bit color. Hey folks, we're doing this in morning. The shoot is 3.17 p.m. on a Monday, which is crazy. I am just on my way to meet up with Marcus. And then we'll bomb out to the mountains. Um, obviously, the main point of today's shoot is to shoot, but I will try to do a little bit of BTS while we're out there. All right, so now we are out on the course. Marcus is in the background. We've just gotten our sunrise shot. Alex is a badass. He's looking super good on camera. Do you want to say hi? Jacob, oh my God, Jacob, I'm so sorry. I've, I've been calling him Alex this whole time. I am a horrible human being. This is all wrong. How dare you? He woke up at like four in the morning to shoot with us and I am not a good person. Jacob, I am sorry. All right, bad man, it's fine. Yeah. All right, cool. So anyways, we got most of our shots on three here. We've done some drone shots as well. The golden hour is looking very nice. Uh, the GoPro shot no dice it went flying off the golf head um the camera's still in one piece so i think that's a real testament to gopro build quality all right let's do it <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. yeah that didn't work yeah it didn't blow up though <laughs> you know so obviously we're trying to get jacob's shot journey up to the green but it's not like a one size fits all right also he's hitting the ball way too well so it's not like you could be like oh you're gonna take three strokes to get there right so it's uh you know it's actually been reasonably challenging so far the money shot <laughs> so marcus what's been your favorite hole we've done so far uh, that first hole which was was first hole. Yeah, so yeah, the big view of the uh, yeah, three sisters. How can you beat three sisters with the red sunrise? It's amazing. Mm -hmm. 
Oh man, we're just gonna capture these last few moments on the GoPro because I'm pretty tired. So just to quickly go through how we had everything organized. We actually did all of the shoot today on a golf cart, obviously, you know, we were trying to cover a decent amount of ground. So we didn't want to have to uh, go on foot. So I basically actually organized my gear into separate bags so that way then I wouldn't get confused or wonder where things were as we were going. It actually didn't have to change batteries at all, luckily. Um, but in this bag here, this is where I kept all of the camera bodies as well as the batteries. We got my drone in a separate container as well. And then in the third guy here, this is where I kept all of the lenses. Let's head back to Calgary and then we'll just put together some closing thoughts there and talk a little bit more about what my final thoughts were on the gear I used. Show you what I got. If the wheels keep spinning, keep the pedal pressed. Hey, all right, this one's kind of an outlier. I'm actually taking the GoPro back to the camera store right now. So I thought I would just do my closing thoughts on the GoPro um, with the GoPro itself. Um, you know, I thought the footage coming out of it was pretty good. I don't use a lot of action cameras, so I don't really have like a good starting point. Um, I would say compared to the uh, Pocket 3, it's not even close, at least from my perspective. I did a full review of that camera, check on my left hand here. GoPro was good. I mean, it just didn't really capture the, the moment and the mood that I wanted, but you know, I'd say the form factor being able to just vlog with it while we were on site, that was pretty cool. And I really got a kick out of that. Oh man, well, what a fun shoot. That was so much fun. Um, I think just before we go any further, um, I'll just talk a little bit about the gear that I used and what I didn't use. Here 11, you already heard me talk about that, but let's talk about the other GoPro, which I used in the video or thought I would use and that being the GoPro Hero 7. Um, you know what, it's a great little camera, but it didn't quite pan out the way I wanted it to. Um, I was able to get it mounted on the golf club just as I had um, practiced at the range, but what I didn't do at the range was actually taking a swing. I thought, oh, it, it fastened on, that should be fine. Well, it wasn't. You only know once you try. And you know what, still in perfect shape. The mount itself actually worked. It was the casing that held the camera onto the mount that uh, gave way. So I think this will be something I will try to do again in my own time. It was just uh, not something I wanted to try doing twice while shooting at a uh, world-class resort. Now let's talk about the lenses I use on the S5 II, which is what you're seeing me through right now. We'll go in order from the lens that I use the least to the one I use the most. The one I use the least but was still one of my favorites is the Pergear 14mm f2.8 manual focus lens. This lens is honestly something that I carry with me most of the time. It's not very big, it is a little bit heavy, um, but that really cool shot I got in slow motion right in front of the ball. I actually got with this lens. Next lens I used was 50mm 1.7 lens. This was definitely something I used, especially in the earlier hours. I um, wanted to try using the Pro Mist filter. I mean, you know, it definitely does make kind of a cool glowy effect. You know, I'm not necessarily something you want to use all the time, but definitely a cool effect. And this lens worked super well in the lower light scenarios I was in, in the super early hours of the morning. Then the lens I used for most of the shoot was the Panasonic 24 to 105 F4. This worked really well. Um, I was struggling a little bit in the earlier hours, um, that F4 aperture, but you know what? Overall, it performed super well and the autofocus was really snappy. Uh, that's something I love about using the S5 too, is the autofocus is not something I have to fight. 
great. With any camera, you know, you have to learn how to get the most out of it. But once you learn the S5-2's uh, autofocus algorithm and um, how it works, it's super easy to dial in. Then outside of that, the thing I shot with the most that day was the DJI Mini 3 Pro. And man, oh man, I love the shots I got out of this. Uh, it was so much fun having an opportunity to shoot in a place where you don't always get to. And I mean, obviously you saw the footage. I mean, it was spectacular. I could have flown up there with a 240p old GoPro and it would have looked awesome. So, you know, definitely a ton of fun shooting with this. But before we wrap this video up, I do want to just give a quick thanks to the people that made this video possible, starting with the camera store. Um, you know, the camera store is definitely a staple store here in the city of Calgary. Uh, they've been supporting my channel off and on for the last year now, and it's been really fun working with their team. Evelyn and Dave are just so supportive. So whether you're from inside or outside the city of Calgary, definitely go to the camera store.com. They've got lots of great blogs, great rates on a lot of the newest gear and so much more. The link is below. Next, a big special thanks to Panasonic North America for providing me the lens that I shot the majority of the shoot with. You know, uh, the 24 to 105 definitely simplified my workflow and worked super well with my S5 II. If you're interested in purchasing a Panasonic camera or learning more about me and my involvement with them, there's a link for both the bio they did on me as well as their general page below. And lastly, and probably most importantly, a big shout out and thanks to Silvertip Resort up in Camor for providing us the space and freedom to shoot the way we wanted to. It's very rare you get a chance to partner with a world-class resort like that. So, you know, special thanks to them for supporting us in this way. If you'd like to learn more about their course or maybe you want to go out to play, there is a link below. I know my bio section on this video is pretty much all links. That is okay. In the comments below, I'd love to hear what your thoughts were on the footage. Are there, are there some things you thought I did well? Maybe things I could improve upon? Maybe there's questions you have that I didn't answer. Either way, comment below. I would love to hear from you. Anyways, let's wrap here hit that like button subscribe to the channel and remember to take beautiful photos every single day don't do it for the views do it for yourself and i look forward to seeing you all in another video super soon especially now that i'm over my creative block see ya